Welcome to McDougal. In this show, you're going to meet the woman in John's kitchen, his wife, Mary. Hello, I'm Wayne Judd. And now, he really does eat like a horse, Dr. John. It gives me a subject to talk to you about. You know, people probably think I sit back there and plan these subjects, uh, script them out, get the research ready, and so on. I don't. Quite honest with you, I uh, was planning on doing a discussion on early detection techniques before you said that, and I've abandoned it and decided to talk so to you I've about So I changed your whole kickoff topic. You have topic. changed the entire topic. Instead, I've decided to talk to you about eating like a horse. Eating like a horse. Yes, and I agree, I eat like a horse. That's well, very, we were right. That's right. The horses are vegetarians. Horses are vegetarians, but... And I'd like, to, I'd like to contrast for you the difference between vegetarians and carnivores. All right. That's in terms good. of various animals. Now, what, if I was going to mention a carnivore, what animal would come to mind for you? A uh, dog or wolf. A How about a cat? Cat is fine cat if you want to okay. talk about a cat. And if there I was, was gonna, a right answer. Tell me if that, there's a right there, answer. Yes, there was a right answer. Okay, That's cat. Fine. Cat. Okay. No, I like the dog, too. Okay. So it's fine. Well, let's go with cat. And we'll go with cat. All right. Now, uh, how about if I mentioned a, a vegetarian? A vegetarian, I would think of a cow. All right. Or a horse. Well, a horse, since we're talking right. horse. Or a monkey. Pretty much vegetarians. I'm having a hard time with the right answers okay, on this. Okay, well, let's, I just want to give going. you some options because we've got lots of people out there that to relate to this. Yes. All yes. right. So let's compare. Let's compare the two. First of all, let's compare the tooth structure of a carnivore, like your cat, all right. and say the monkey or the horse. Teeth. What, our, our teeth are more like which? Well, I know what the right answer is to this. Well, we're do more I have like to bring the a horse. Out? We're more like right. The, we're more like the horse than the cat, John. That's right? exactly right. We, okay. have, we don't have those sharp, pointy teeth. You know, people right. say we got these sharp, pointy teeth. They point to their incisors. Well, go to the mirror and look in the mirror. You see, these are, these are very flat teeth. They're nothing at all like what you see in a no, cat's mouth. No, it's true. All right. Now, to continue the comparison, the, a plant-eating animal or herbivore has an enzyme in the saliva called alpha amylase or tylen. Its sole job is to digest starch. That enzyme is missing in the cat's saliva. The cat has a, a stomach that has a very high concentration of hydrochloric acid for breaking down the high protein meats that it eats, whereas our concentration of hydrochloric acid is quite low. May I ask you a question about that before you go on? Do you have a cat? I have a cat. You have a cat? It, it Do you feed it meat? At times, at times, but it eats a very, it eats, it's, it eats a diet that's very close to I, meat. I was just wondering how far you'd go with your non-meat. Yeah. Well, non it's only out of convenience. Really, you should not feed your cat a vegetarian diet. It'll get very sick and die. So it should eat meat. Absolutely, because that's, that's which the, means that's it's bringing us back. We've got to kill right. something. But right? out, of, out of convenience, we feed it okay. a, a, a diet. I'm just curious about that. Go cats. on. All right, the uh, the car carnivorous animal has a very short intestine, so that the remnants of the food can be quickly digested and quickly passed out of the system, so they don't putrefy. Whereas a plant-eating animal has a very long convoluted intestine so that all the digestion and breakdown of the plant parts can take place. So it takes longer to digest vegetables than it does meat? Oh, much longer. You've got to break down you well, got to break down that. I meat was sure. horrible to digest. Haven't you heard people well, say they eat meat and it just lies in the bottom of their that's stomach? Because, that's because of the fact, just because we have that long intestine, right. and so that, that long intestine is so the food will lie in the stomach for a long time. Oh, okay. The meat's not supposed to, so it putrefies. It rots. Oh, okay, there. okay. All right, now here's, here's another good comparison. We have hands for gathering, yes. not for tearing meat apart. If you have any doubt, go home or you'll have to go to a friend's house, get out a big steak and try and tear it apart. It won't happen. Our hands are designed for gathering. Yes. We, have a, we have a liver that has a limited capacity to excrete cholesterol, whereas a dog or a cat, you can feed them pure egg yolks, and they'll just increase their, their production of bile acid and excrete all that cholesterol. And of course, cholesterol comes from meats. Yes. Uh, we, ha we are obliged to have vitamin C. Vitamin C is present in plants, whereas most animals, including carnivores, don't have to have vitamin C in their diet. We, we, uh, we do. So we were designed, our creator, thinking we'd never be in a situation without adequate plants or vitamin C. And here's a couple of good ones for you. How do plant-eating animals cool themselves? Um, plant-eating animals? Yes, like a horse. How does it cool itself? Well, they sweat. They sweat. How does a carnivorous animal, like your cat, cool itself? They pant. That's their right. tongue hanging now, out. I've, been, I've, known you for, I've known you for a long time, and I've yes. yet to see, under these hot lights, I've yet yes. to see you panting. No, I haven't uh, done so that. So I have to. Okay, how about, how about when you drink? Uh, do what, a plant-eating animal, when it drinks, what does it do? In general. Well, it, it, it 
It sips. I'll make it easy it, for you. It, it and the, sips. The, carnivor, the carnivorous animal, how's your cat taking water? Laps. That's right. Same thing. The tongue now, deal. Ah, the tongue I deal I had again. lunch with you okay. today. We had and lunch. I have to tell these folks he did not lap once. I didn't lap. No. So I have to I assume. Sipped. I sipped. I have to assume by all that comparison and that anatomy and physiology that you were designed as a plant eating animal. But where we get full is the human being is a survivor. It tolerates two packs of cigarettes, a half a bottle of whiskey, and the entirely wrong diet. And it lives. So people think that that's okay. Wow. When we come back, I'm going to introduce you to the most important person in my life. Oh, that's my marvelous. wife, Mary. We that's work great. together, we live together, and she's got wonderful things to teach you. So after this commercial break, we'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to change your life? The answer may be as easy as watching TV. Introducing Hello Channel, an exciting new channel that's designed to teach you to speak English. New opportunities will be available to you when you learn the language of the Internet, commerce, travel, and diplomacy. No need to pay for your expensive schools or tutors. You can learn English by watching Hello Channel. Invest in yourself. For a brighter future, say hello. And uh, welcome back. Mary McDougall is with us. Mary McDougall, of course, is my wife and uh, the co-author of the books. And also somebody, she spends a tremendous time helping me teaching uh, appearing on radio shows with me, and it, it really has to take her out of her usual environment because Mary would rather be home taking care of the kids and the plants, right? That's right. But you do such a nice job, I keep asking her to do it. That's great. And there's so much she has to contribute in terms of uh, the practical aspect. Well, I think I'd like to usurp John McDougall for a little while and talk to Mary about John. Would that be all right with our uh, studio audience and our viewers? I hope so. <laughs> Good. Okay, let's do it. First of all, Mary, let's start with the most obvious question. Does this man eat like a horse? Does, oh, he really yeah, eat, yeah. does he really eat the, the, the talk? Oh, definitely. He does. He I think he's talking pile. about volume. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. He's like he, a he horse can pile in every sense. a lot of food on a plate and then go back for a second. Now, who does the cooking in your family? Do you most, most of the cooking? I do most of the cooking. You do? He can cook a few things. Hot dogs? Yeah. Vegetarian you know those vegetarian hot dogs? burgers? But, you know, they're vegetarian. Yes. He can cook those and he can cook oatmeal. Ash, prom potatoes. But you wouldn't call him a gourmet cook? No. He's a, a convenience cook, you know, if it comes in a package and you can open it and put it in a pan. Okay. <laughs> and I suppose he needs a little coaching even for that time to time, well, is that right? let's just say that when I go away on vacation in the summer with the kids, he loses a few pounds. Ten, All right. Ten to All right. <laughs> uh, Mary, did you, uh, did you actually help convert John? Did he convert you? How did you both become, it seems to me that you're of one mind in this whole dietary business. Is that true? Well, yes, but it was his idea. I mean, he was the one that went to the library and did all the research. Yes. And he'd come home with stacks of papers, and he'd say, you know, well, Mary, we really have to give up the red meat. And how long ago was that? Oh, about 18, 19 years ago. Is that right? And you had children at that time aged? Uh, one and two. One and two. So your, your children basically have not had any diet other than the... Yeah, but this gets worse. It wasn't just giving up the meat. Okay, let's go on with the next stage. What <laughs> happened after the red meat? Well, Mary? then he came home with more stacks of papers, and he'd read those, and then he said, you know, Mary, we really have to give up the chicken and fish. They're just as bad as the red meat. Chicken and fish. Yeah. Did, you, did you just say, yes, dear? Well, I did in the beginning. Okay. You see, but the story keeps getting better. All right, let's go. I want to hear And I all. said, well, that's okay, because there's quite a few vegetarian cookbooks out there, and I can just switch to dairy and egg products. You know, that's ah, what vegetarians eat a lot Of course. Everybody knows right? cheese yeah. can replace a lot of that stuff, so, right? So we ate like that for a couple of months, and then he came home with another stack of papers, and he said, you know, Mary, the dairy products really have got to go. They're just like liquid meat. John, were you just trying to find <laughs> new ways to make your wife more miserable, or no, what? Was, what's this research? What I was trying to do is I was trying to find a dietary approach that would help my patients get well. I didn't really care what it tasted like. I just wanted them to get well. I see. And so the research kept pointing in this direction. And, and I couldn't ask other people to eat this way if we didn't eat this okay. way. Okay. And how did it taste at the beginning, Mary? Did, it, was, did you eat some pretty gosh awful stuff at the beginning? We... Well, it's not over yet. The transition isn't over. Let's keep moving then. <laughs> 
Well, after that, um, I used a lot of olive oil and, and the other oils in my cooking because that's what you could find in the back of the vegetarian cookbooks. Right. You know, a right. few, few recipes. And I learned to cook with some different things like grains and beans and things mm -hmm. that weren't all that familiar. And then he came home with another stack of papers and, you know, he said, it's about the, fourth the installment. vegetable oil has got to go. It's just not healthy. And let me tell you, he almost went along with the vegetable oil. That was oil. the last straw. <laughs> that was the almost last it. Straw. <laughs> John, yeah. uh, can you tell us about that conversation? No, that's, how did it that's go? exactly how it happened. But she was, uh, she was very happy to make these changes. Uh, she did offer a little resistance, but she knew it was important. And the adjustment that we made turned out to be uh, not only valuable for other people, but it saved us the problems of being overweight 20 years later, saved us the problems of, of looking at heart disease and breast cancer yes. and other things that so many people fear greatly. We feel that we have a much reduced risk of these and this And this was, in fact, was your objective when you did this research? No, it wasn't something was, that came later? I was later? only concerned about my patients. I wasn't really concerned about our own diet. Right. I just wanted to, I see because I was so frustrated, Wayne, because my patients would not get well. Those that were fat stayed fat. Those that had chronic indigestion stayed sick. The pills didn't solve the problems. Those with high blood pressure, I just kept adding more and more pills to their program. The diabetics went on to dialysis, went blind. I felt like a lousy doctor because yes. none of my patients did well. And so I was fortunate enough to learn the importance of good diet when we lived in, in Hawaii on a plantation. I saw my plantation patients, my first generation plantation patients, who were from Japan, China, and the Philippines, were very healthy. And so it gave me an idea how important diet was. And so I just started going to the library and doing all this research and found out how important it was. But this strongly uh, opinionated, well-informed husband of yours didn't, uh, in fact, uh, bully you into this. You came cheerfully, and you saw the good sense of this, oh, I yes. take it. Um, the, the difficult part at first was, for me was to learn how to cook foods without any oil or, or anything else in them. And we had a few failures. How did some of that food taste? Can you remember any of it, John? Do you remember any particular disaster? Uh, the, the failures I didn't get to eat. Oh, oh we, you hid we, those. No, we fed those, to, or we tried to feed those to our dogs. To the dogs. Yeah, they but we already know about their teeth, don't they we? They wouldn't eat them either. <laughs> <laughs> well, so finally, you, you, when did you start working on a cookbook then? Um, Years later, I assume, or no, did you? No, right from the beginning, because he You couldn't had, find a cookbook, could you, with no. this kind of cooking? and he had patients that were coming through the office, and he was telling them how they had to eat, and there weren't any recipes for them, so I would write things down that were Very successful. And that's how you became a team in this yes. business, is that you helped him help his patients, and right. at the same time, you helped yourselves. Yes. That's amazing. And uh, we had lots of recipes. Now she has published in five different books that are national bestsellers. They're national bestsellers, she these She has books. over 1,300 recipes published. That's great. Yeah. So 1,300 no, they, no one has an excuse for not That's eating this right. food. That's There's got to be something you can like in 1,300 and, recipes. And your children came along with you uh, cheerfully enough. Uh, they never knew any they, other they diet, don't did know they? Any different. they don't, yeah. They didn't know another. And you know, children right. really like to eat simple foods. So it yes. can be very easy, like pasta and bean yes. burritos. Yes. And things like that. That's really kids' favorite things. Very good. See, it wasn't too revealing, was it? You didn't get this, any of the deep, I, dark secrets, I, did you? I liked what I heard, and uh, well, we, in fact, we, we're going to do some cooking, aren't we, we in a little are. bit here after we take a break. It was an honest transition, and we went through and all I'm, the difficulties uh, that other people are going through. And that's good to know, because there isn't some sort of miraculous process that takes place. And I'll say what John usually says, we'll be back in just a minute and we're gonna do some cooking with Mary. Mary, what are we gonna have? We're gonna do soups. Because soups, soups today. Soups today. Soups soups today. today. We love that. Just say. 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 Hello. And welcome back. Mary McDougall is going to show you and Wayne some of the delicious <laughs> things that we have in our kitchen. Can't wait. In fact, you're going to make my favorite soup. Your favorite soup. Southwestern black bean soup. And you know, it's just such, a, such a common recipe. I mean, you can get this in restaurants. Right. People have, and it's and, and it's really it's basically the same as you're going to do now. And is this out of your recipe book? Yes. Okay. This so is out of the new McDo. We can all make this. You bet. All right. All right. And this is one of the things that you can put on in the morning and uh, let it cook all day. You can do this in a slow cooker. Put some water in a pot. 
And Mary has once again consented to let me... Um... I'm going to teach Wayne how to cook. So. Right, she's given up on me. <laughs> no. Some black beans and an onion. Okay, now actually, you would let this cook for a while to get the beans softened and have the onion flavor go through there, but since we don't really have time for that, I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's very, very easy. You wouldn't soak the black beans overnight? You, just... you could, okay. but I don't usually. I'm okay. one of these people who doesn't plan that far ahead what okay. I'm going to have for dinner the next All night. All right, good. <laughs> What's this? This is garlic. A little garlic. And a little right. garlic. Looks and good. Then, uh, Smells good. And then some tomatoes just to add a little bit of flavor. Oh. And these pans are Can not I just real big. That's yeah. enough. Yeah. Is that enough? <laughs> all right. For this one it is. That's all right. I forgot to wear my McDougal apron today, but that's okay, all right. Okay, then we use some chopped green chilies. This gives it a little spice. Oh, yes. And some cumin. Okay. Chili powder. Oh. Lemon juice. This is going together very quickly. I bet you wouldn't yeah. have it all laid out like this, uh, would you? She hasn't put any chickens in there. No or chickens. Any, no, any bottles Crushed of oil. Crushed red pepper. No. And then after it's all cooked, then I usually add some chopped cilantro to give it some flavor. But I don't do that until the end because otherwise the, the flavor isn't as and good. And we have, we have one all finished. We have one all finished. It looks like this. It looks all together different, doesn't it? It does. It's beautiful. Now, will this be hot to the taste? Is the seasoning pretty hot? No, this... it's not. It's, okay. it's very, very mild, but it does have a southwestern flavor uh -huh. to it, but it's not and it's very good. too spicy. And that's it. We've got everything and in here. And lots it. of body to it, too. Oh, that's really good. Tasty. Well, are we going to do something else? Shall well, I move this? We're going to do gonna something, gonna something else. else. Okay. Something simple again, I hope. Something really simple. This is, okay. this is something that that I've discovered is it's, it's easy to use already prepared products to make things uh, much faster. We're going to make a, a quick bean and vegetable chowder. All right. And this okay. is your this pouring is in? This is vegetable broth. You oh, can, where do you get vegetable broth? You can buy this in, in any supermarket. You can buy it in health food stores. You can make your own and freeze it. And then I use what I call a quick bean mixture, which is basically a combination of split peas, yellow peas, barley, can you buy that lentils. Too? No, you make that yourself. Oh. But you can buy it, because we've been buying it. Uh, we mail off somewhere for it since we oh, went really? on the diet. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it looks exactly well, like this. I just make my own and put That's it in great. a big jar, and then whenever I want to make this soup. Oh, it makes wonderful soup. Just well, It's real easy. And then I use a little leek. I like the flavor of leeks. And then instead of chopping up a potato and making a potato for my chowder, I use frozen hash brown potatoes. Now that's my kind of cooking. All right. Well, you just open the bag. You can do this. Huh? Can do and, right. and the potatoes, I use them in a lot of things because they thicken things really nicely. Hmm. And then I use some frozen corn. Oh, it's, it looks like chowder, Mary. It does. Boy, that's wonderful. And there are no clams in here yet, are <laughs> no there? No yeah. clams. <laughs> not, not going to put any clams in here. All right, we use a little well, soy no, sauce. If you think about it, it they, they add very little. The meat is put in there as a, as a garnish, and it really doesn't bring any flavor to it. The flavor it really comes doesn't. from the seasonings and all the vegetables you put in. And clams, I'm going to assume, aren't very good to eat anyway, right, They John? are very high in cholesterol, Yeah. very high in animal protein. What did you just put in here, Mary? I put no some marjoram fiber. and thyme. No okay. carbohydrates. And here's some sage and pepper. All right. Oh. oh. The clams are gritty, too. Yes. We don't have any gritty flavor and, in our and, soups. And, and, also, and also, there's a high rate of infection with hepatitis viruses in them. You oh, don't, really? You don't want me to talk about that around dinner time. Not sure. around dinner time. Not around this <laughs> You know, one of the things that, that people are always asking, Mary, is how do you get the oil out of the, out of the cooking? What, what are some of the things that you use just for, for general cooking to get the oil out? Uh, well, I always saute in water okay. or a vegetable broth or something like that. Oil is, the, is one of the easiest things to get rid of once because the way most people use oil is to saute vegetables. And all you need to do is just put a little water or vegetable broth in the bottom of your pan mm -hmm. and saute your vegetables in that. And they brown up just they as nicely. They brown up just yeah. as nicely. And soups are one of the easiest things to change over because you don't need oil in soup. Right. And people are, well, a lot of people will take this nice, healthy recipe and they'll add up some oil. They'll add oil because it. they think it's And all that better. oil is going to be deposited in their fat cells, so they all shouldn't do that. John, take a look over here. I'm cooking two things at once. That's tremendous. It's a miracle. Yeah, I'm right. very proud is of this you, Wayne. wonderful or what? <laughs> now, was it bad if I use the same? You'd use no, a different you spoon, wouldn't it. you? And the other thing people have been asking me during all these shows, and I can never remember what it is, and we have no vested interest in this company. Is they want to know what kind of cookware you use. I use a product made by Farberware. It's called Millennium. It's a nonstick um, finish that is baked onto their stainless steel cookware. 
and I love it. There's all kinds of non-stick pans on the market, aren't there? Oh, definitely. And uh, the other thing they ask is they ask how you make, um, how you replace oil in baking. Just give us a couple of ingredients. Oh, um, there's a product called Wonder Slim that replaces oil in baking. Mm -hmm. You can use applesauce, baby food. Well, we're going to have a chance to try this soup here in a minute. You did a great job cooking. Oh, and we'll be fun. back <laughs> after this commercial break. Welcome back. And this is how I would eat. I mean, I would eat these three bowls that this you have is, in front of you. This is Plus, not... I would eat probably half a loaf of bread for a meal. And this is what it means to eat like a horse. That's what it means. And, and you, never, you never have to be hungry again if you learn this type of meal plan because we left the fats and oils out. Well, I'd like to just enjoy it while you maybe answer one question about Mary. We've given Mary an opportunity you to talk have about some you. Of the intimate details? I'd like to know if you have anything I, I to tell, tell us you. about Mary I'll while, we're, while I'm I, eating. Over the 23 years we've been married, uh, there were times when she would cook many, many, many meals, all kinds of delicious things. But these days, Mary is busy with other things in her life. And as a consequence, Mary has developed the quick and easy method of doing the McDougal diet. Oh. And as a matter of fact, her newest cookbook, which will be out probably in a year, is going to be focusing on recipes that you can make in 15 minutes or less. Well, wow. yes, because uh, she has discovered that there are other things in life now, besides the kitchen. That's not the one you were just talking about a little while ago. No, no, this the is other, another new be, one. That's yes. the next project she has. And so, as the kids have grown older, <laughs> she has become focused more out of the home I as, see. As, as most families mature. And she's found ways to do it how, instantaneously. How, how do you find time to do this, Mary? With John gone, you don't have much to do, <laughs> right? He's everywhere. Tell about some of your instant meals, Mary. Um, I'd like to hear about that. Well, like I said, I use a lot of the frozen potatoes and vegetables and things like that. When I fix rice, I always fix extra so that I can make up something really fast the next day. Canned beans are great to use. And they mm -hmm. make pasta sauces that are fat-free. There's about 20 varieties now that are fat-free, so you, you don't even have to cook. And that's going to be more and more the right. case as we move on. Right. And, and this whole movement becomes nationwide. I've uh, learned to love nationwide. these bottled pasta, pasta sauces, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love the ones you made from scratch, but I've learned to love the mm -hmm. other ones. And uh, we have all kinds of interesting box soups. Right. Is the, is the, will that be as tasty as, as these three soups that I'm enjoying? Now, this black bean is just too good. No, Wayne, they're not. <laughs> they're not as good. <laughs> they're not as but good. you should buy the book anyway, right? But, no, the, the ones that she makes from scratch are much, much better. But I never let her know that because I don't want her to have to go back to being you a slave to the kitchen. Otherwise, I'd give up cooking entirely, right? Probably. <laughs> and the other thing she's developed is a, is a real talent for eating out. <laughs> That's good. And we'll have and to do a whole it, show she? on that. I'll she have to do a whole show on how to eat out. And tell you how in our town of Santa Rosa, she has talked to 70 restaurants into fixing McDougal food, and it's right on the menu. Oh, there that's, that's is cool. the ultimate strategy <laughs> that Mary right. has. Mary, thank you. It's been fun hearing more about yeah. John. I really appreciate it. I think John's going to bring us to a close now, but it's been great having yeah. you. Thank really you, great. Thank you, and thank you for, for being with us. And goodbye. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.